I'm going to give you five tips to improve your sprint reviews and get the best feedback out of your agile software development project. Let's jump in. Hey, my name is David and welcome back to the Agile Broadcast. If you're new here and you want to learn more about Agile software development and other lean related concepts, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss a thing. So if you're looking to get better feedback at your sprint reviews, this is the perfect video for you. So I'm going to give you five amazing tips that really made the difference and helped me get the best out of my projects. But before we start, I'd like to point you to a video from Gary Strawn from Development That Pays, where he covers the sprint with you in a lot of details and breaks it down into seven aspects that come from the Scrum Guide. It's an excellent video. I really recommend you watching it before you watch this one. But here, what I want to do is go beyond the basics, beyond what the Scrum Guide says, and give you the key ideas that will make your sprint reviews not just good, but really, really effective. So stick around till the end of the video. Tip number one, not just a demo. It's so much more than just a demo. It's not meant to be just a demonstration. It's meant to be an inspection, an inspection of the product that just being delivered. So if you reduce it to just a demo, then all you're doing is showing progress on the work being done. And that's not a review or an inspection, that's just a progress report. So people often complain that they don't get meaningful feedback at sprint reviews, but it's partly because we treat it at just that, a demo and nothing more. And from the point of view of a product owner, you've been promised stuff and stuff has been delivered and now you're being told what that stuff is. You have hardly anything to say there. So you want to show progress, don't get me wrong, but you want to show progress of value being delivered, not just work being done. And it's also a decision point for the product owner. It's a decision about what to build next. It's the moment, perhaps the moment, that you have to ask yourself the question, are we building the right thing? It's the opportunity to make course corrections. And so the focus should not be on just demonstrating the work. The focus should be on getting feedback. It should be a feedback party and not just a progress report meeting. Tip number two, the product owner should own the sprint review. Because the clue is in the name, product owner. And since the review is about the product, it makes sense that the product owner leads the meeting. Most of the times, though, I see the development team leading the meeting and the product owner is treated like a customer, waiting to see what the developers have produced. If you treat the product owner like a customer, the product owner is going to behave like one. And this creates an us and them, which goes against what Agile and Scrum stands for. And you end up in a vendor-supplier relationship, which is a bit of an anti-pattern. You want a collaboration. And so many people complain that the product owners are not engaged well, get them to lead that event. Get them to own the product. Tip number three, allow time between sprints. Now I know this might be a little controversial and the official Scrum Guide doesn't say that at all. I think you'll find in there a phrase that says, the new sprint starts immediately after the previous sprint, as finished. But one of the key principles behind the Agile Manifesto is sustainable development. So consider this, if you have no slack, you are at maximum effort all of the time. Now how long can you last like this? But that's a whole other topic that I might cover in a different video, uh, but let's go back to getting better feedback. So at the sprint review, the product owner, the development team, they should be full of ideas, right? They should have options in their head of what to do next, suggestions on how to improve this and that. And that's a lot of things to digest. And if you rush into starting the new sprint straight away, you'll have no time to, to digest all of this. No time to really understand the lessons learned. And no time to really evaluate what has been done during the sprint. Because you actually need to evaluate the delivery. And I'm not talking about the retrospective. I'm talking about evaluating the product. Is it fit for purpose? Did it actually help people? Did it bring value? You can't just assume that value has been delivered. You have to actually test it. So I'm not talking about having downtime. I'm talking about taking time to analyze and study what has been delivered. 
And all of this takes time. There's no way around this. And you should really do all of that before you make decisions about what to do next. Which brings me to the next tip. Tip number four, address discovery, not just delivery. So first, maybe let me just tell you about what I mean by discovery and delivery. So delivery is all the stuff that people typically think about. What has been implemented, what hasn't been implemented, were there any blockers, burned out charts, forecasting for release plannings, etc. And most people will focus on this exclusively to the point of obsession. But there is another side to this, which is the discovery aspect of the work. As the name implies, this is about discovering what the right thing to build is. So that means trying new features, running experiments, uh, doing workshops with users to understand what they need. This is a very neglected part of the work that should, in my opinion, have a more prominent place. So what does that mean for the sprint review and getting feedback? Well, people always talk about what they've implemented, what they haven't implemented, what they'll implement next, etc. That kind of thing. But they never talk about the discovery work. So do that. At the sprint review, show the things you've tried, show the things you've learned, Show the experiments you've been running. Show what you've tried and learned and show the results of that. And show what you'll try next. And if your stakeholders are kind of product people, people who like to innovate and try new things and wow their users, they'll love hearing about discovery activities. By the way, I've got a whole video about the personality and psychology of innovating and trying new things. Go and check it out. Tip number five, discuss the direction of what you want to do next. I know, I know, this might sound like we're trying to go into sprint planning already, but that's not what I'm saying here. So look, we've just looked at a sprint. We've just been to a sprint review. And now is the best time to make decisions about what to do next, at least the high level direction. And that could be the goal, the sprint goal for the next sprint. Your sprint planning meeting is simply the next meeting to discuss how you're gonna achieve that goal. This is very easy to implement, but it relates to tip number two about the product owner owning the event. Here they can close the meeting by having made a decision on what to build next. So I hope these tips are useful. So let me know, which one is your favorite tip? Which one would you implement first? I'd love to hear your thoughts, but maybe you have your own tips. Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. So give it a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you want to see more like this, consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next episode of the Agile Broadcast.